our department and, and school. So one is there's a real desire to expand the number and impact of UCI faculty. The number being thrown around is another 250 faculty members. Currently, we're at about 1,000 to 1,200, so that's about a 25% growth in faculty that um, are anticipated to come in the next five to 10 years. Okay? Now, a bunch of those are likely to land in our school. How many? I don't know. Um, but it's certainly one of the schools right now, and also one of the departments, which is experiencing a lot of growth. So the campus having this plan aligns well with our particular need, and I expect to see some growth as a result. Increasing research expenditures to over 500 million annually. It's 350 million, they want to bring it to 500 million. A big portion of that apparently is the med school um, and the medical side of the campus where there's a lot of potential for growth, but it's, it's everywhere. They would like us to go higher in the expenditures because part of that pays the bills for all the students that are there and more students is generally a good idea. Um, especially if you have more faculty, right? We want to add PhD students, master students, undergrads to that. Um, develop, support, and promote new comprehensive research initiatives that shed light on social problems and address regional and global grand challenges. Almost couldn't think of a better department than ours to do some of that. Right? We are so connected with the research that we do to what's happening in the world, um, we should be taking advantage of that as the opportunities come by. Expanding the student body and making UCI a first choice campus for students. You might have seen the Twitter campaign that's coming out of the campus at the moment. Whenever in May some students said, yes, I'm going to go to UCI, it always was, was that the first choice, right? Because in the past, UCI was often a backup university, and they're trying to build momentum where we're no longer a backup university, and I think we're, we're getting there. Also, a desire to make 25% of the student body graduate students. We're not there at this moment, but certainly there's a balance that needs to be achieved between undergrad and grad. Becoming a partner with community organizations and partner with Orange County to develop a national model for how to live responsibly and well in the 21st century. I think this connects a lot to the research agenda addressing social, regional, and, and global kind of challenges. So this is something that we do as a department, just naturally, partly as part of our research, but we also have faculty and students who really want to do this. So let's see what we can do. This is news at the campus level. Anybody missed this and had not seen eSports plastered somewhere on campus, okay? So um, eSports is, is um, under uh, a, a name that is for the eSports arena that will actually be open this afternoon um, at four o'clock. It's a new facility in the student center. It goes right with UCI's the number one gaming university. Um, so where there's a professional uh, club, um, a, a student club that has gained about a million dollars worth of funding to build an arena, to house the arena, um, and to actually offer scholarships for students who are part of their competitive teams. So 10 scholarships in this, this first, few, uh, first year. Um, this is getting a ton of national press, which is interesting, but also it gives us actually opportunities to study this group. And I already know some faculty who are making connections with that out of our department, observing what's actually going on and, and if we can make any, any sense of that. And I think we can. But what kind of effects does it have, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is happening. It's a big deal. It's all over the news. This is something that's likely forthcoming. Um, it's called the Cybersecurity Privacy, and now read this word very carefully. Okay? It took me five times reading not to say policy, but policing. Um, it's very specific. It's a, it's a Privacy and Policing Institute. It's a combination of law, ICS, engineering, social science, and social ecology. It primarily came out of the law office, or the, the law school. And what it's focused on is the FBI has a number of cybersecurity centers around the US, actually four, I believe, at this moment in time. They're wanting to build a fifth one. And these cybersecurity centers actually monitor you know, companies, individuals, I don't know. Um, but they monitor a lot of, of the internet and what's going on, and they're actually amazing facilities when you look at them and the capacities that are there. There's stories that they actually know that Target was being hacked. They told Target they were being hacked. It only took about eight months for Target to respond. Um, so so they, they know a lot of stuff, and for our department, of course, we're curious about this, the privacy part. Um, what the center is preparing, though, is preparing the next generation of lawyers, judges, law enforcement officers, legislators, and et cetera, um, who can deal with cyber crimes and cyber attacks. So how do you prepare a workforce for that? 
Um, we are not necessarily part of the discussion yet. I'm actually talking to the person who heads this up on Monday um, and trying to figure out what kind of role an informatics perspective can, can play in such an educational and research facility. So we might hear something more about that. But certainly this is forthcoming. They've hired an interim director. Um, they're putting things on, on the road, so you, you should hear news coming from that. At the school level, um, we have a new dean. So you, you all know, I think last year, I announced that there was a dean search. Well, there's a result out of the search committee and some of our faculty participated. Um, our new dean is Marius Papa FTMU. Um, he comes Say to us, <laughs> Papa FTMU. How many times would you like me to do that? <laughs> I can do a lot. Um, I've spoken to him a whole bunch of times already. Um, he was by far the, the top candidate for, for just about everybody, I believe, who was involved. He comes to us from the University of Michigan, and uh, he was the chair, or he still is actually the chair of computer science and engineering there. Um, from an informatics perspective, he has a great understanding of what we do. Um, he knew about our reputation well before he interviewed, um, and so far he's been nothing but receptive of the kinds of research we do and, and support it. So I really look forward to working with him and, and continuing to build, to build the department. At the programmatic level, at the school level, there is now a bachelor's in data science, which has enrolled its first students. It might not be a total interest for everybody, but we keep adding, or we keep adding and modernizing our degree programs as a school. Um, there's also a master of computer science that's approved, but that will not start until next year. So th these are just small programmatic changes there. Um, this is an interesting slide, the campus undergraduate admissions. So this is actually not just admissions, these are the students who are actually showing up, okay? So parentheses is the numbers from last year, and then before that is the numbers this year. And I've of course highlighted information and computer science as your school. Last year we brought in 400 freshmen, this year we're bringing in 557. Last year we had 197 transfer students, this year we have 307 transfer students. Um, so that's a big increase on both those numbers. And for all of you who are TAing, you'll see them in your courses. Um, and uh, it is a piece of job security for the PhD students and for quite a few of the master students. It's a source of employment of, of support for you. Um, this does mean though that our courses are getting larger because a lot of these students end up in, in the courses that we have. It also means that you know, ICS is now I think by, just by freshman the fourth or fifth largest school on campus, which is not where it used to be three, four, five years ago. So it's, it's an interesting transition. It comes with lots of challenges how to advise these students, how to make sure they all can graduate in the number of years that they have, all those kinds of questions. But we'd rather have them here than not. Um, other school news, um, we all are in Brent Hall right now, um, and then there's a couple of other buildings into that direction somewhere. There's ICS-1 and ICS-2. Um, but we're starting to slowly grow out of space. There is going to be another building, um, and for those of you who are parking in parking lot 12B, which is that way, <laughs> You won't be parking there much longer um, because that is exactly where most likely the new building will go. Um, what's this new building? It's a new building, and there's a, there's a caveat there that says kind of. Um, it's a new building together with engineering, together with physical sciences, and I think together with bioci, um, that is focused on what, what's being called on campus convergent science, um, which is science you know where multiple people come together from multiple disciplines all pile in the same building and hopefully good things happen. That's, that's, that's the simple description that I can give it. Um, and so we won't have the entire building, we'll likely have a floor on the building. Um, and so there is room for growth in this building because most likely what will happen is the stats department will happen to, will move to that building, um, which gives us room to probably grow to the sixth floor, gives computer science room to grow to the first floor. Because um, we are slowly growing out of our fifth floor space. So. This is helpful in many ways, except for our parking. Yes? Is that building public information yet? Um, I have a good, it's a good question. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> it is now. Um, and as far as I know, it, it's, it's been talked about everywhere. Okay. Uh, but whether it's public is actually a really good question. So, so you know a new building is coming, but you know nothing. All right. This is public information, though. The enrollments for the school are at an all-time record. Um, this fall, we're seeing about 2,700 undergraduates. And I thought there was a lot of undergraduates when I started in 2000. Um, we had about 1,800, I think, that were right around that, that number, so. Um, no, 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 no. We were, we've, we've been we broke 2,000? 2, okay, at one well, point, but 
It's still bigger than what we were back then. Yep. Yes. So, and it's not likely to go go back down because there's another round of larger admissions coming next year. So that twenty seven hundred um, doesn't include the eight. No, no, no. It does these. It does include these people. Okay. Yes. It, it's not thirty five hundred. <laughs> um, no. Um, there's also some new faculty in uh, CS and in statistics, um, and there's also lots of new staff on the sixth floor and other kinds of places. And so. The school is working to try to anticipate some of this, especially staff in the Student Affairs Office, um, but you will interact with some new faces as a result. There's been some staff turnover as well. Now at the department level, what does all that translate to? Well, this, this is perhaps the biggest news of the past year. Um, we have six new faculty who have joined us. So we have Kai, Kai, are you here? He's right here. Started in January, <laughs> hooray, yay. Um, Rebecca, you're here too, yes. hiding in the corner. She doesn't like me calling around, so I won't. Um, Aaron, yep. you're hiding somewhere. Yes, there he is. Tommy, I saw you as well in the back. Um, these folks have arrived, have an office, have set up shop, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, they're available for you to talk to, although there's a little caveat about Bonnie. Um, she is officially finishing her postdoc at USC for this upcoming year. Um, however, she has set up shop here most of the time, so if you see your door open, you know, by all means say hi and, and welcome you know, her, et cetera, as, as is true for the others as well. Um, the other two here, uh, Constance Steinkuhler and Kurt Squire, um, they are uh, faculty currently at the University of Wisconsin. Um, they will be here January 1st. Um, so that, that's, you know, I'm tremendously excited that they're all coming. Um, we as a department have needed, especially expertise in um, health informatics, expertise in digital media and learning, expertise in, in games, and that expertise is all, all of a sudden walking in the door pretty much in a single year. Um, and that's just amazing for us. Um, this, this represents as many hires as the school did um, at, overall, um, just in the department. So we're just fortunate and lucky that they're all, all joining us. Of course, there are some departures this past year. Um, so I see some sad faces. Yes, Don unfortunately has moved on. Dan Frost as well, he's retired. Um, so unfortunately, this happens. This is part of a university. Some people leave, some people go. Um, but both will certainly be missed. They provide a lot of leadership in all sorts of different aspects of what we did as a department. Um, and so I felt it was important to recognize that they were still part of us this past year. There's some forthcoming retirements, which I think most of us know now about. But is this public knowledge, Judy? Yeah, it is. I know. I'm, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, so Gar Gary and Judy, um, as as most of us know by now, um, will retire at the end of this quarter. Um, we will miss them in some ways. We will celebrate them because they'll still be here. So we'll only miss them when they decide that they're really retired. Most of the time, they have promised they'll still be here. They like to do research. They like to interact with us. They like to mentor. They like to help. Um, so they've promised to be here and have their doors open as always. So I, I really look forward to that. Um, but everything that you've done for the department in the past years is, is definitely greatly, greatly appreciated. So um, we do have some new vice chairs. So something to think about as you sometimes have something that might need talking to. Jillian um, is still vice chair for graduate affairs. She's not here right now because she's teaching the HID program and more on that later. Um, you, so she'll be mostly the primary person for most of the PhD and master's students. If anything comes up, you know, go talk to Jillian, well, talk to your advisor first, but if, if you can't get answers for something or you have a particularly troublesome situation, come talk to Jillian. Um, Yunan Chen uh, will serve as vice chair for undergraduate affairs. So in your role as TA, for instance, you might have to interact with her if something happens in the class. Um, and then Paul Durish has agreed to take over from Gary as the uh, chair for by, uh, chair for research, vice chair for research. Um, and so, and I know he's already working on some initiatives that hopefully all of us will benefit from. So, especially if you have questions about research, training grants, um, about you know, what we should do, um, you have a proposal that you don't know quite how to angle it, um, talk to Paul first. He will most likely get others of us involved. Right? We don't want him to be the proofreader of all of our proposals. Um, <laughs> he's actually going like this. Look at this. <laughs> he was doing this. All right. Um, but nonetheless, he's a great resource, has a ton of experience, so please you know, make use of it as much as you can. At the curriculum site, the, you know, we've had a fairly stable set of 
degree programs for a little while, except that there's a new program that's online, um, or that, that's come online this year, and actually just this past week. It's the Masters of HCI in Design. Um, it's a blended learning environment. It has some, online, uh, some time on campus, and that was this past week. Um, it then has some online courses for the year, and then a mixed kind of experience as the capstone next summer. Um, this is the, the inaugural cohort, 22 students, together with a bunch of the mentors. Jillian is here. She's been teaching the first year course. Um, and I think somewhere in this picture, Don is hiding as well. Um, he's teaching in this program as well. Um, so we're tremendously excited to have this program online. It serves an entirely new population of students. Most of the people here are actually working um, full time. They're taking this in their extra spare time um, to retrain themselves to be more of an interaction designer um, and learn the skills and learn the practices of that, of that discipline. And a number of them actually are looking to train themselves in a new discipline. They are not necessarily interaction designers. We've talked to lots of people with lots of varying backgrounds. That's exactly what this program is for. Um, so we're super excited. Um, the first class is here. Um, it's off and running. 22 students is just about right for a first year, and we'll go from there. Um, there's also a proposed Masters of Soft Engineering um, that we have submitted to the campus right before summer break. It should be on the discussions early October, then we'll go back and forth. Hopefully somewhere in spring there will be approval. My guess is that that program is going to start in uh, to fall 2018 um, with its cohort of students. And both, again, this is also aimed at people who have a bachelor's who want to learn much more about software engineering and train themselves in detail in that. In terms of hiring this year, we have one open position. The ad is out. It is, again, in the area of digital media and learning. This is not the only area I like. Um, I like lots of areas in the department, but this is the uh, result of what was a high impact proposal that we submitted to the campus, which was a proposal for a cluster of hires. Um, this is an outflow of that. It's approved at the associate or full professor level, um, and it's asking for people who have especially sort of a design take on the topic and actually are out in the field um, trying to make um, innovations and learning from those innovations in the field. And, uh, we're looking forward to having some candidates come by. We're looking forward to hopefully you participating in the interviews that we'll have. Um, the deadline for candidates to apply is somewhere in November. We'll do the interviews in January, and we'll go from there. So this should bring us another faculty member, which would be good. And there'll be a little bit more about hiring later on as well. There will also be additional staff in the department. Um, for those of you who walk down to Susie and Adriana and Marty, um, they've become increasingly busy. We've just been generating more and more work as a group. Um, to recognize that, find, you know, the dean's office has approved um, a new half-time staff member who will help with what's called academic personnel, which is partly bringing in visitors, bringing in foreigners, bringing in students from uh, different countries, um, and dealing with personnel cases for the department. This person will be shared with statistics. Um, and then together with the HCID program, which needs its own administrative assistant, we're exploring getting another administrative assistant that half time will serve us and half time will serve that program. So we recognize the load that we're putting on them and, and we need some help and that's, that's forthcoming. Um, there's also uh, some of the latest news is a GAN grant, which is a graduate assistance in areas of national need. I'm highlighting this grant because this is the type of grant that actually benefits all of you, or most of you, or some subset of you. Um, it's not the type of grant where there's research, and that's the research topic and that we gotta work on. This is a kind of grant that's more of a community resource, and it's especially aimed at recruiting and retaining underrepresented PhD students in informatics. Um, but one of the things that typically happens with a grant like that is that it supports more than the seven because different students get different amounts of support from it. It reduces the load on the faculty members in terms of how much they have to support folks. Um, and as a result, having the, had these grants in the past, quite a few of you have been able to have research positions rather than TA positions as PhD students. And that then in turn frees up the, the, the TA slots for the master's students. So this is, this is a good resource for the department. It's for the next three years, and we're gonna try to make as much benefit of it as we can. And um, stay tuned, there will be emails from Marty and or I that will come forward somewhere this fall about how to apply for support for the winter quarter, um, because that's when the grant officially starts and we start trying to, to pay people from that. Um, 
School undergraduate admissions, remember the big numbers, the 557 and 307, something like that. Um, this is the distribution over the various degree programs. And in, in red are the ones that we as a department are responsible for, singularly or, or jointly with computer science. Um, so business information management got 20 freshmen and 11 transfer students, which is a small number, but that is a capped major anyways. Uh, computer game science had 56 new students and 24 new students, so pretty much a wash in terms of the total number of students coming in. Informatics traditionally has very low numbers, um, always does. This time we have eight, uh, which is two more. I would like to claim that is a 33% increase in enrollments. <laughs> <laughs> and even in transfer students, we are up 20% as well. Um, but this, this is always the number that we see, and, and you'll see the explanation for them in just a little bit. And then software engineering, 25 and 23 students as well. Um, compare now that to, of course, computer science, which is the really, really large um, first enrollment when students come in. And this is most likely um, simply because high school students, they know the term computer science, that's what they apply for. Then once they're here, they actually figure out what kind of major, what kind of interest they have, mostly in terms of their education. Um, and this is how that then shakes up, because four times eight does not add up to 180. Um, so we have currently 180 students in informatics, 140 in software engineering, and it's only in its third year, 220 in computer game science, and uh, uh, nearly 130 in business information management. So um, we have a healthy number of students that come in as computer science students, or actually some of those bio students or social science students who find us and then actually come participate in our classes. So our majors are doing very well. Um, and they all continue to either be stable or actually grow. This is the only one that went down, but that was because a number of years back there was a, a very large cohort that got admitted, um, and that's not now slowly but surely making its way out. So it's still the cap major that's there. And of course, notice CS has 1,400 students. Um, and those students are also in our classes because they, even if they don't switch majors, you know, a design class or an HCI class are definitely of interest to them, and so they, they tend to take them. Um, and this then translates into graduating students, uh, seniors per major, and it's barely on there. Um, but you can see we had 67 informatics students, 14 software engineering students, 43 CGS students. So we're just producing healthy numbers of students just like we are supposed to. Um, and you can see that the total for computing, which includes computer engineering, computer science and engineering, and in, in engineering, um, is now well over 600 this year in terms of just graduates, so that the number is going, going rapidly up. At the graduate level, um, we have currently 39 PhD students, down from 47, but that is being fixed by all of you sitting in the room, because how many of you are first year PhD students here? Okay. So, A, welcome to the program. Thank you for taking a chance with us. I hope you have a great experience. Um, and it's not necessarily a chance. We're gonna have a great time. Um, and, and two, there's actually 20 of you. Um, so we admitted 20 new PhD students that are as part of our programs. So um, this number no longer is accurate pretty much as of today. Um, and in terms of master students, how many of you are new master students here? Okay, also welcome, also gonna have a great time. Um, and so the number is slightly down, but that's just kind of where we are because a bunch of students graduated. The master of HCI is 22 students, and then in software engineering, any new software engineering PhD or master students here? Okay, also welcome. Um, and you know that number is fairly stable as well. So we, we have a healthy basis of students coming through um, and we're doing well in that regard. In terms of the graduated students, you know, here's part of the explanation why we went down a little bit. We graduated 12 PhD students this past year, which is not quite a record because we had 13 the year before, but we have more students that, uh, that, are, that are graduating very soon as well. Okay, so that's numbers department where we stand. Um, just some accomplishments, things that I like to like to generally celebrate. Um, so here's three pictures, um, Paul, Krista, and Gary. Um, so Paul was recognized as ACM fellow this year, um, and he was, oh, go ahead. <laughs> which, which is an award, um, or is a recognition that goes to less than 1% of the membership um, of, that, of that group, and it's by, nomination um, and it, it's something that's incredibly prestigious so we're, we're very happy and very very honored um, paul also was recognized as chancellor's professor on campus which is another level of distinction um, that exists on the campus and is, is again um, recognizing the kind of work that he does uh, not just for the department and for us but also for the university so so thank you paul 
Um, Krista uh, was recognized uh, with the Antonio Pizzicati Prize for uh, software in the interest of the public good, open source software in the interest of the public good, um, for her efforts with uh, the, her Second Life client and being the architect of that and various other things. Um, and then Gary was recognized as a Kai Lifetime member um, for service. So he's done a tremendous amount of stuff, including chairing the Sikai and other kinds of things. And um, the SIG has recognized him for that, for that what he's done there. So clap, 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 clap. <laughs> now, I don't know how many times you want to clap because I have a lot of these kinds of great things are happening in slides. Uh, at least it's not a person. You can't clap for it. So there you go. Um, so we're looking at, Darren, are you here? Yes, there he is. Um, we're looking at a collection that Darren Denenberg, who is uh, a lecturer in the department, has donated kindly to the department. Um, it's a collection of video games and especially consoles that date back 40 years, I believe is the answer. Um, so there's an incredible historical collection of video games um, that is actually sitting in a room over there. I'm not pointing out which one because I don't want any of you to break in and steal it. <laughs> um, so, um, and the plan is to take this collection, to take the collection that Josh and Karen have been building up, um, and try to figure out how to put this collection on display and how to make this collection accessible for historical research. And there's some space up on the first floor um, that we believe we're going to be able to do that and then to have maybe a, a subsidiary exhibit sort of area in the department. Um, and the whole goal is to have these be playable so that people actually can play these historical games, examine them, and, and work with them. So some work to be done, of course, to make that happen. But thank you, Darren, for, for contributing that, because that's incredible. Although it was sitting in a garage in, in you know, Vegas, so <laughs> might have a better home here, so it's appreciated. Um, books. We, we continue to write books. I don't, I don't know. The fact that he just keeps writing books, it's a good thing. Um, so Mimi Ito has written a book on participatory culture in a networked area. Um, Jeff, who is not here, has written the book Boundary Objects and Beyond, um, edited with a whole bunch of contributions uh, about working with Lee Starr. Um, I have written a book that is perhaps the, not the world's shortest book, but certainly the shortest among those three in terms of the number of words on pages. Um, but these books are coming, this one is coming out, this one is out, that one is out, and I know of at least one other book um, that is forthcoming as well. So, um, And these books are interesting, right? Most of us are sort of judged in some ways based on the research, um, and that we're taking the time to put these books out to, to communicate what's happening to a broader audience. I find that very important uh, role of what we, what, what we do. Um, Paul, it's you again, I'm sorry. Um, but one of the things that, that I also appreciate is our work is getting more recognition also in the mainstream media. So the work that we do connects to what happens in the world, um, and the world is starting to pick up on that. So this is The Atlantic, um, Paul had a piece in there, and I think it's been downloaded how many times now? I read 20,000? More? Something like that. Some, some crazy number. Yeah, I so, don't get the figures. I got 30,000 after two weeks. Well, there so. you go. So, so some, some crazy number, and that was just about flash drives. All right? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know. Um, and then, uh, for those of you who've been paying attention to social media, Glory Mark and her uh, postdoc, Yu Chen, and Sun Ali, one of our students here as well. I don't know if she's in the room. Um, recently wrote an article in the Psychology of Well-Being on promoting positive effect through smartphone photography. Of course, this has now all been translated to, you take selfies, you're happy. All right? <laughs> that might be an oversimplification of what's actually in the paper, <laughs> um, but it's, it's almost daily in the news somewhere, um, which, which, again, speaks to you know, doing work that is scientifically rigorous, yet appeals and communicates to a broader audience, which I find uh, very nice. Um, Gloria also was invited to speak at the Aspen Ideas Festival, which happens, it, it, which is a fairly rare um, kind of invitation, so we were, we were proud of her for doing that. Um, and then on a completely different kind of topic, back to research expenditures, right? One of the things that keeps the research enterprise going is research grants. Um, and this, this past year we've had quite a bit of success um, on, on various fronts in terms of uh, Matt Beats, Alfred, Krista Lopes, Paul, um, Gloria Mark, getting grants in all sorts of different topics. So uh, impact of privacy environments for personal health data. Um, and then we have something like software analytics for big code. And then discovery of trust descendants and their effects on individuals and social media influence under different cultures. All sorts of different kinds of topics. But th these grants this past year has actually been very, very good. And there's more here too. Um, here's five other ones. Um, and I know that there's a bunch of other ones as well. 
Um, I want to highlight one um, because on the next picture, um, this is a, a grant that Deborah Richardson got together with some other folks. Um, it's a grant of, for building a local area network of computer science teachers. So I think we all know computer science for all is this effort that's going on nationwide. Um, but there's a real big question about who is actually going to teach the elementary and high school kids in terms of these kinds of skills. And so Deborah put in a proposal together with, I think actually, um, she was on it, Rebecca was on it, and some people in the School of Education were on it, um, that is building a network of local teachers to teach in the high schools and basically <coughs> teaching the teachers kind of grant. It's a million dollars to make that happen, which is, which is awesome. Um, and so as a result of it, she got to go to the White House. Um, he was not bowling with her. Um, it was a little disappointing. Um, but other than that, you know, it, it is again recognition that there is Does attention know on these topics. She's an actress, but who? I don't know. I, I read it and I don't remember. So there you go. Halt and Catch Fire, great show. All right. Um, 1980s computer science revolution. Wow. Okay. And she was there, so clearly. <laughs> In any case, Deborah went bowling in the White House. This was a big deal. No, it was the event that it was attached to, of course. But the grant happened, and there was there was a national and summit talking the about these bowling. kinds of things. That's right. Um, we will also recognize uh, with a hundred thousand dollar grant or uh, award um, by NC Wit for the efforts that we're doing in women in information technology as a school. Um, and there is a one award per year, and the Bren School was actually awarded that this year for the programs that it's building. Um, and the programs that, the outreach programs and mentoring programs and et cetera. So um, if you have any interest in that, let me know because I can connect you with the folks who are doing that because the, the school now has an office of access and inclusion which runs a lot of these kinds of programs. Um, Catherine Lowe, I don't think she's in the room. Yeah, yeah, you are, there you are, yes. The hair color doesn't match. <laughs> um, got a NSF GRFRP grant, or no, not a grant, a fellowship which is a three-year fellowship from the National Science Foundation for the work that you're doing. Um, and let that be a plug for all of us. Thank you. It, these are actually very competitive. These are not easy to get, as some of us in the room know. Um, so, so major congratulations, but also let this be inspiration for those of you who are in their first year or perhaps in second year and still eligible as PhD students. Um, we will do everything we can as a department to mentor you in these kinds of uh, applications. Um, it's built into Informatics 201. Um, it's not built into Informatics 211 for those of you who are software engineers. Um, but if you're eligible, um, come talk to either Jillian, come talk to me and say, what kind of help can you give me? The campus has a bunch of resources. We have successful proposals, not just yours, we have other ones as well, that you can model yours off of. And we'll help you to try to do to, to submit the best kind of proposal you can. Because it, you know, A, it's an honor, but B, it actually pays the bills for three years as well. Um, and that helps your, it helps your fellow students, so. And it brings attention to UCI, that you know, students constantly have it. The, the campus knows that informatics is serious about this, and it knows about informatics partly because of efforts like this one, so thank you. Um, sorry to have you again, but that's it. Um, Center for Technology, Society, and Policy, um, so both Catherine and Morgan Ames, one of our former postdocs, um, have been selected by the University of California Berkeley to be part of that, again, a prestigious honor because there were lots of people who were interested and only a few that were selected. This one is, I had to put this in here. Um, for those of you who don't know them, um, you should have been here earlier, um, these are the two longest running PhD students over the past decade, and they have actually graduated. All right. <laughs> I, I know them both well. Um, I'm not making fun of them. I'm just celebrating that they're actually done and that I know they would appreciate it. So Michael Gorlick works at the Aerospace Corporation. Um, he worked full time during the time that he did his PhD. Gerald Boris works at a company called Mirth, now QSI, also worked full time during his PhD. Um, but both of them took a long time to get there, but they both graduated and we're both very proud that they did. Um, so. Um, this is Katie Pine at the I conference. Um, she and several others, including Melissa as the faculty member, I believe, uh, won the best paper award at the conference, which is, which is an honor. And this is something that happens fairly regularly, it seems, at various conferences for what we do. 
Um, Jillian Hayes was uh, selected by the Jacobs Foundation um, to wrote the, with a uh, research fellowship, one of three out of about 500 applicants. So there's major, you know, major recognition for the kind of work that she does, um, specifically in educating children and other kinds of things. Um, Alfred Kopsa, and I need to read this one because I always forget it. He got a Mercator Fellow, um, which is a recognition by the German uh, government, um, and it allows joint research between here uh, and Germany. Again, it's one that doesn't get handed out very often, and he received one of those. Um, and then this is the last one, and this is sort of a nod to Hadar, who is sitting over there. Um, Hadar teaches, together with Darren, teaches another incarnation of our capstone undergraduate course. And the students that are going through that course, they typically um, go through a, a real-like kind of project where they get, have a client, they figure out the requirements, they will design something, they'll actually implement it, usually a prototype. Um, but lately, we've seen an awful lot of success in the prototype being pushed beyond that and actually being deployed at various companies. And this is just SoftFinder, which is an app um, that you can download from the App Store built by our own students. We'll tell you wherever you need to go on campus, whoever you need to find. Um, and just as a little, you know, one little success story where it actually just helped us, um, but much of this is happening also with companies all across the board. Every year I go to the Capstone celebrations and the sponsors from the outside world are incredibly happy with our students and actually continuously hiring students from this program. So, so we're doing something right in the education during the four years that they're, that they're able to produce this and, and lead to this great excitement. And then, Last but not least, great things are happening. If you need a mug, a t-shirt, a bag, a anything, um, we can get you the informatics branded version of that. Um, and you should know all of this is run by the grad students. Proceeds go to the grad students, okay? So um, part of your coffee hour is paid for, I think, by this, but probably a small part. But nonetheless, if you need anything, you know, this is a good place to get it. In terms of year ahead, uh, it's time to wrap up a little bit. Um, I see some pressures and some opportunities. In, in terms of pressures, we have 20 new PhD students and we had 40 students. That is a 33% change, okay? So there's a whole bunch of new students who are coming in. And the same is happening at the level of the faculty. We hired a bunch of people, some are retiring. Um, so we need to do some effort, all of us need to have some effort, into making sure that we remain one department, that we tell everybody about who's who, that we introduce people to, people that we don't know, that we participate in social events, all these kinds of things to welcome the new folks and to actually you know, have them have the same experience we had when we came in as part of a smaller cohort. Because um, somebody who came in with like six or seven other students um, and then there were 40 or 50 students ready to mentor you. So, so we have some, you know, not a huge pressure, but we have some obligation to make sure that we, that we all talk to each other. And part of these seminars and part of the social hour after is exactly meant for that. Enrollments, I already talked about that. We have a ton of new students coming in that makes our classes creak. Um, it really is hard to teach 200 students compared to 50 students, right? You don't know them by name anymore. Um, we have had to offer multiple incarnations of various, um, various courses. Um, and just staffing them and dealing with all the students is a, a positive thing. We want them to be here, um, but it takes all of us working very, very hard to make sure that they have the right kind of experience. And then space, and I'll talk about that in one of the next slides. We're slowly growing out of space, so what, what you can do about that. Of course, there's opportunities as well. New faculty and students. Hopefully, you all are going to do really great things. Um, and that's what we are here to support you to do. Um, both the students and the faculty, you know, do what you do, do what you do best, and let's, let's see where we end up. And there's usually really cool new perspectives, really cool new ideas coming from the new students and faculty that are coming in. That, that's why you're here. The budget is looking up. I got a little increase as a department chair. I think by next year we're gonna look a lot better in terms of the kinds of things that we're going to do. Um, so look forward to some small little changes as we, as we go forward that might benefit all of you. Um, not necessarily financially as a direct check, but some things we might be able to do. Um, and then further recruitment. The department does continue to grow. Um, and so that is an opportunity to bring in the best and brightest and, and help us do what we do. So in terms of hiring, one position I said has been approved for the digital media and learning. Um, no additional ex positions are expected this year, not for this moment, except that the campus has a number of programs. One is called the Mid-Career Program, one is called the High Impact Program, one is called the Distinguished Program, um, and there's, there's a variety of other ones. And 
Through these programs, we are able to put certain folks forward and request that they be hired here. So if all of a sudden you see some interviews that are not associated with this position, um, you know what's happening. Then we are actually recruiting for one of these positions and hopefully you can help us with that. So, so there is the potential that we'll bring in more than one person this year so that they'll join us next year and let's see what we can do. And we have to be fairly strategic about that. The other thing that will happen this year um, is the ACID program and the first year of real online courses. I mean, I know Bill has been running an online course once a year. This is a nearly full online program. They've been here for the week, but now they're going to go home for nine months. Um, and so this is a new kind of experience. And some of you will TA for this. Um, and I think we need to build some understanding and some capacity for how to best do this and share that. And so this is coming forward. These students are crazy enthusiastic. Um, so let's keep that going even while they're actually elsewhere. Um, and there'll be some challenges in that, I'm sure. In terms of space, we are, as I said, slowly growing out of space. Um, so I expect that this year there will be some reorganization. Now, don't all go, oh, where's the Lucy Lab going? Oh, where's this going? No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. But we will we need to move some folks around to a degree. So some faculty and staff might move. Some labs might be co-located. We're, we're talking about some of the smaller labs and maybe opening them up so that they're more like the Lucy space. Um, so some of that is forthcoming. Um, any ideas are always welcome. Um, I will talk with what's called the Chair's Advisory Committee somewhere next week. Um, but if anybody has any ideas into you know, how to use our overall space, so it encourages more presence, more collaboration, more community, i.e. how it can benefit you the best, um, come talk to me right after and say, you know, this space is not working, or that space is great, can we have more of that? Um, I'm welcome to, uh, to any and all suggestions. And of course, in the face of some set, subset of us, we don't know yet, maybe some students, maybe some faculty, maybe staff, um, moving to the sixth floor here because we just don't fit on the fifth floor anymore. So. In any case, let this be an open invitation. If you have ideas, talk to me, send me an email, um, and you know, be prepared. If we start moving some folks around, it is because we need to, not because we want to. This is the thing that I've been trying to put off a really long time. Um, other priorities for me, fundraising. Um, I now go up to the Bay Area every other month together with some folks from the school. Um, we've made some interesting contacts with some alumni. We've made some interesting contacts with, talk, contacts with some folks that um, that um, you know are, are in companies and other kinds of places, and I, I expect hopefully this year, maybe next, some results out of out of what's been happening. Um, nominations, just like I was talking about the NSF GFRP, we should try to nominate ourselves. Right? There's lots of scholarships, lots of fellowships that are coming by, uh, lots of nominations we can do both at the faculty and the graduate level. And so, if you have an interest and you qualify for a Google fellowship or a Microsoft fellowship. Again, come talk to us. We're here to help to try and make that happen. Um, alumni outreach. Uh, one of the things I'd like to do is get more alumni to come back and talk to us, what the life is like as maybe somebody in industry, maybe somebody in academia, um, and mingle with our current students. And then, you know, despite space, we've had quite a big year this past year with new programs, lots of new hiring, lots of change, um, some stability would be really nice as well. Just things the way they are, and not too much change for a little while, would be, would be good if we can build some of that into the next year. Unclear whether we can with all these programs and the hiring and the space, but you know, we'll try to do some of that and, and see if we can think, keep some things stable. Um, anybody who knows, I'm publicity hungry, so sign up for Facebook, sign up for Twitter, but especially let us know what is happening. Okay, I, for when I prepare this talk, I tend to go back through the Facebook and Twitter feeds and try to find some of the highlights and you know, for my memory as well. And it's actually pretty incredible. If you go back over one year, we do a lot. And we have a lot of impact and we have a lot of exciting news. But the only way in which we know about this exciting news is if you actually tell us about it. So if you have an interesting research experience, <clears throat> Kita, like you're going on some farm somewhere, take a picture, let us know. We can tweet about it. Not guilting you, but just saying. Um, so, so, you know, let us know what's happening because it makes this for an exciting place. And I know that grad students nowadays, one of the things they do is they look at the social media stream and say, what's happening in this department? Is this the kind of department I want to be part of? And so the more we portray who we are, um, the better off we are in this, this regard. Um, a plug for the upcoming seminars. There were uh, flyers out there. Everybody should have grabbed one. We have an incredible lineup this fall. Um, you know, 
come to the talks, please do. Um, they're going to be informative, they're going to be fun, um, and they're going to be some amazing speakers telling us about all sorts of different things. And then finally, just thank you. Um, and as there's tradition, there's a social hour after this colloquium. The social hour is downstairs on the fifth floor. Um, this time, it comes to us courtesy of the MHID program, because those students are wrapping up their time right now. Um, and so it's a joint reception together with the students who just went through the program for the first week. You know, introduce yourself, ask them how they were doing, make them feel welcome as well, part of the program. Um, and other than that, say hi to each other and enjoy the rest of the day. Um, thank you so much, and always time for questions if you have any afterwards. So thank you. Um, it still is Melissa, though we're working with the school's communication office. They have hired another person, and she's going to take over. The plan is for her to take over the social media stream altogether, and she will be able to be more proactive about reaching you. But definitely, Melissa or me or anybody, let us know. So. Any other questions? All right, let's go rate the food pile.